Elon Musk's bold prediction has finally come true. Years ago, he predicted that LiDAR for autonomous driving vehicles was not only useless, but would actually be a crutch for the companies relying upon this technology. Ironically, even LiDAR magazine agreed with him back in 2019. Now, this stance didn't come out of nowhere. It's easier to predict the future when you're the one building it. Elon Musk had plenty of experience with LiDAR even at the time when he made this statement, having spearheaded the development of LiDAR for SpaceX's Dragon capsule in order to dock with the space station and to detect the spacecraft's proximity in real time. But this week, the entire LiDAR industry received some devastating news. Tesla competitor Mobileye, whose self-driving systems are centered around high-definition maps combined with LiDAR, radar, and cameras, announced that it would be shuttering its LiDAR division, laying off 100 employees who've been developing the technology in order to try to save $60 million. Now, one would think that this move would be great for competitors, to remove another player from the playing field, but the entire industry has been struggling for some time. Earlier last year, Velodyne, which develops its own LiDAR product, laid off 600 people. At the same time, the industry began to consolidate as Velodyne merged with a company called Ouster. But this doesn't seem to have helped the stock much, as it's trading just pennies away from its all-time lows. Then, just a few months ago in May, Luminar laid off 20% of its workforce, transforming the company into a penny stock. So what exactly does this mean for the industry and the technology, especially with regards to autonomous driving cars? Well, Mobileye claims that they're not giving up on LiDAR just yet. The company notes that prices of time-of-flight LiDAR units offered by competitors are low and reasonably priced, making it more cost-effective to purchase them rather than developing them in an in-house solution. However, that may be because demand is quite low, especially as companies pull back on EVs in Mobileye's case, as it relies on purchases from other OEMs. And demand must be waning for the LiDAR industry as a whole if LiDAR development centers are closing up shop and downsizing while reducing prices to keep up with the increased supply and falling demand. This may actually be good for outfits like Mobileye, who've been finally waiting for price drops in this expensive technology. Elon Musk has alluded to the fact that LiDAR has been prohibitively expensive, even saying in 2019 that it's like having a whole bunch of expensive appendices. Consider that Tesla removed even the radar and ultrasonics from its vehicles to lower cost and rely just on cameras. Every dollar counts when manufacturing vehicles, since the cost of each component gets multiplied by millions of units per year, not to mention the extra robots in the factory, human effort, and the time it takes to install these devices into the vehicle. If LiDAR was adding hundreds or thousands of dollars per car and eating into margins, it's certainly going to be difficult to compete with Tesla, which is aiming for a vision-only solution with its set of onboard cameras. LiDAR devices have also proven to be relatively flaky as they spin around on the roof of a car. Moving parts are more prone to breakages and malfunctions. LiDAR also suffers from many of the same issues that regular cameras have. They can be blocked by the elements such as rain or snow, but the LiDAR has typically sat as an eyesore on top of vehicle roofs, whereas Tesla's cameras are integrated seamlessly right into the car behind the windshield and wipers on the front, while the side cameras seem to be quite resilient to any type of weather, even snow, as they're tucked under a sort of sheltered design. Now, some think that solid-state LiDAR, which is a LiDAR that doesn't spin and has no moving parts, is the holy grail of LiDAR, except that solid-state typically points in one direction and has a much lower field of view. Therefore, to get a 360-degree map, multiple LiDARs would now be needed, which further increases the cost. The real reason Elon Musk used LiDAR for Dragon in space, but not for cars, is partially because Dragon is a low-volume product with a high price tag. It requires a 3D map in the complete darkness of space, where there's not much out there besides the space station itself. LiDAR provides real-time proximity measurements 
helping Dragon to connect safely and with accuracy to the space station. Back on Earth, however, vehicles drive more so on a two-dimensional plane and have headlights to light up the road in front of them at night, which allows for cameras to be used. And because there's a massive fleet of Tesla vehicles, the autonomous software's AI can be trained on camera data to detect distances with high accuracy. LiDAR doesn't add much more value here. It's essentially a point cloud of distances to objects, which from a software perspective actually adds a lot of noise, especially in a busy environment. And so what's strange is that as Mobileye is shutting down their LiDAR development, claiming that they will still buy LiDAR from third parties at more attractive prices, they also outright say that LiDAR technology is less essential to future products. And so it looks like they'll only be using LiDAR for setups with existing customers. But going forward, their focus seems to lie more in the realm of vision, with the progress made on their IQ6 chip and their internally developed imaging radar. This sounds a lot more like Tesla's strategy from 2016, just after Tesla and Mobileye parted ways. Mobileye has been working on LiDAR for years, and it's been a core part of their true redundancy approach, having one system with LiDAR and radar, complementing a system of cameras. One system fills in where the other fails. However, the counter argument has been that you can't actually drive a car with just LiDAR and radar, because neither of these technologies can see texture, color, and external light, such as traffic lights. Cameras are definitely required, meaning the true redundancy approach is not actually redundant. The way redundancy is achieved is by having multiple cameras. Tesla, for instance, has three forward-facing cameras. But if Mobileye is removing LiDAR now, true redundancy goes even further out the window. This creates an interesting dynamic. Elon Musk's choice of not using LiDAR early on has allowed Tesla to focus purely on vision and direct all of its resources and efforts there. Today, the company is spending billions of dollars on AI-based data centers to try and close the gap with training the AI on huge amounts of real-world data. Competing firms using LiDAR are actually not using it the way you might expect. They're trying to detect nearby objects in order to essentially figure out where they are and place the vehicle very accurately onto a high-definition map which is a precise centimeter level map that companies like Waymo and Mobileye and others must keep up to date at all times. But maps change very often, especially as roughly 10% of the world's roads change every year, and there are plenty of dynamic obstacles that aren't covered by the map which could quickly become dangerously stale. For example, these systems appear to handle construction zones, We've seen Mobileye's and Tesla's vehicle navigate around pylons and such. But construction zones are typically well labeled with plenty of bright orange signs and warnings, etc. But what about when the construction is completed and the structure of the road is now completely different? Perhaps a new curb has been added or a pole and the lane lines have been repainted. These are things that must be updated on the HD map in real time requiring human drivers to navigate this new road a bunch of times in order to gather enough data and generate a new map. Fairly impractical to be done in real time before an automated vehicle shows up, which is why Tesla took the AI path instead. And if an automated vehicle can navigate this area without an HD map, then an HD map isn't needed anywhere, which is not the case. Even if Mobileye, for instance, decides to backtrack now, They've been spending their engineering efforts focused on HD map solutions, which work until they don't. Tesla's solution is much more difficult to achieve, requires massive data centers, a huge fleet of cars that collects video data, and needs some real talented engineers. This solution essentially doesn't work until it does, but it can handle a wider variety of driving scenarios in real time. Video goes in and car controls come out. In a recent interview, Andre Karpathy, who used to head the AI team at Tesla before leaving the company, surprisingly is still immensely excited about Tesla's approach. He even singled out Google's Waymo, saying that while it looks like Waymo is ahead, he still believes that Tesla is in fact in the lead. 
Waymo has a hardware problem and Tesla a software problem, and software is easier to solve. And this is what will allow Tesla to scale faster, even if it takes longer to achieve a generalized solution versus Waymo's HD map solution. Carpathy makes another interesting point and explains very clearly that Tesla does in fact use LiDAR still, which explains why people have been able to spot Tesla vehicles on the road fitted with LiDAR and other sensors used for testing. But this isn't because Tesla is planning to roll out LiDAR to all of its vehicles. As Andre Carpathy explains, Tesla uses LiDAR during the training phase, while other companies rely on LiDAR during inference. Tesla feeds LiDAR data into its system to validate and compare it against its vision data, which can be done with a relatively small number of vehicles. HD map solutions require every single vehicle to have LiDAR, which is far more expensive to scale. While Tesla is indeed spending billions on NVIDIA graphics cards and their own homegrown Dojo supercomputer used to boost its AI compute power, this has put them far ahead of other players dabbling with LiDAR who have not focused nearly as much time on AI. The supercomputers are also beneficial and required for other projects as well, like the Optimus humanoid robot, and it's also a fixed cost, so it doesn't scale along with the increased vehicle or robot unit volume. Once the full self-driving software is solved, or better than a human, all cars will receive the latest update, potentially reducing the need for further data center investments. However, this likely won't be the case as Tesla has multiple ongoing AI projects that are expected to continue for many years into the future, not to mention continually improving FSD to be multiple times better than humans. And so after years of insisting that LiDAR was essential for self-driving cars and going against Elon Musk's forward-thinking chess move, it now appears that LiDAR is officially obsolete and the companies relying on it may in fact be doomed. So what do you think will happen to LiDAR-based automated driving companies now? And how does this shift impact Tesla's AI-driven approach to autonomous vehicles? Don't forget to watch my last video on how Neuralink's brain-machine interface will end up helping Tesla. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.